Hello! I have been playing with quite a few new concealers behind the scenes these past few months. So today I am going to do mini reviews and rank six new and new to me concealers. Everything from drugstore to high end, ranging in price from $7 to $60. As always, everything will be listed and linked in the description box below, as well as in a pinned comment and in the new YouTube shopping feature so you can check out the products. Many of these links are affiliate, absolutely no pressure, but if you do choose to shop my links, I thank you. Concealers can be such a challenge, especially as we are growing older. The skin under my 63-year-old eyes is really quite dry. It's getting very thin, almost translucent, and the darkness seems to show through more and more each year. Unfortunately, many concealers can really accentuate the bad stuff, and some can actually age me at least 10 years. I will say incorporating my Pixi Peach Corrector into my makeup routine has been a real game changer because it enables me to use less concealer, but I still use concealer. Anyway, for purposes of today's video, I am going to show you the application of each of these concealers without my Pixi Peach Corrector so that you can get a better idea of the coverage and the finish of each product. If that sounds fun to you, throw this video a thumbs up and let's get into it. A couple of side notes. It's worth noting, so I don't have to keep repeating myself, that none of these concealers contain any drying alcohol and only one contains added fragrance. And I will say there are no horrible fails here, but I do prefer some over the others. So if I ranked your favorite concealer a little bit lower, please don't be offended. Starting at the bottom. My least favorite is the Makeup Revolution IRL Filter Finish Soft Matte Concealer. Now this is only $7 for 6.21 mLs, making it the least expensive at $1.21 per mL. It comes with a doe foot applicator, and it does come in 16 shades, which is a pretty good shade range for the drugstore and I have it in the shade C4. Here are the claims. Full coverage, breathable and lightweight, blends effortlessly, soft matte finish with a 16 hour wear. It is crease proof, waterproof, oil free, and cruelty free. Although this is fragrance free, it does have a very faint paint like almost a chemical smell. This is very, very pigmented, yet it is the thinnest consistency of all the concealers I'm sharing today. This blends quite easily, definitely leaves a matte finish. I do need to be careful to pre-hydrate my under eyes with an eye cream first, or it can look a tad dry. As far as coverage, I don't apply enough to get an actual full coverage. My preference is more for medium coverage. You know, this one is okay. It doesn't knock my socks off. It can make me look a tad dry. I do think this would be better for somebody who's a little bit younger or for somebody who has more combo or oily skin. Next up, we have the Tom Ford Traceless Soft Matte Concealer. I hate to rank this so low because it is truly a gorgeous concealer, but I've had it for several months and I just don't find myself reaching for it very often. Definitely luxury at a whopping $60. This is a stick concealer. It does come in 20 shades. I am in the shade 2N. And I have to say, the consistency is surprisingly silky, especially for a stick concealer. Here are the claims. Hyaluronic acid infused for 12 hour hydration for comfortable, non-drying wear, transfer, sweat, humidity resistant and waterproof, non-caking and crease resistant. This one is definitely a YouTube made me buy it. My friend Kiki, who has the channel The Hooded Lid, reviewed this several months ago and it looked so incredible on her that I had to try it. I will link Kiki's review video in the description box below. Like I said earlier, this is surprisingly silky and creamy, especially for a stick concealer. It is very pigmented and opaque, 
with excellent coverage. This is the only concealer that I am sharing with you today that I prefer to apply and blend with the heat of my fingers versus a brush or a sponge. It really looks natural. It doesn't crease. I don't need to powder it. I'm really not sure why I don't reach for it as often as my other concealers. Actually, I really do enjoy this for a spot concealer and it works really well on the red marks that I get from my eyeglasses. Anyway, I'm really happy I had the chance to try this luxury concealer, but I will probably not repurchase it. I just don't gravitate towards stick concealers and the price tag is pretty far above my comfort level. You know, I have concealers that cost less that I tend to reach for over this one, but it is a gorgeous concealer and I will definitely use it up. Heading back to the drugstore with the Flower Beauty Get Real Serum Concealer. This runs about $12 for 9.75 mLs, making it just a tad more expensive than the Makeup Revolution IRL Concealer. Flower Beauty is vegan, cruelty-free, and fragrance-free. It comes in sort of this soft little tube with a doe foot applicator, and it does come in 12 shades, and I have it in the shade Sand. Here are the claims. All day, medium buildable coverage, lightweight, brightens, blurs, smooths, and provides all day hydration. This is very pigmented. I would say this is closer to full coverage than medium coverage. A little goes a very long way and it's really easy to over apply. And when I do, it can accentuate lines and wrinkles, but it has a beautiful creamy consistency. And when applied very lightly, it blends beautifully. Definitely good coverage, yet it feels lightweight and hydrating. It has a really nice natural satin skin-like finish, not too matte, not too glowy. I do tend to lightly powder this with my Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder, and when I do, it lasts throughout the day with minimal creasing. You know, this is a good concealer, and I do enjoy it, but these next three I just happen to enjoy a little bit more than this one. Next up we have an Instagram made me buy it and it is the Fiera Luxury Concealer. Now this runs $39, which sounds expensive, except this tube contains a whopping 15 mLs, which is a ton for a concealer, bringing the price down to about $2.60 per mL. What I love about this is that Fiera has specifically designed and is specifically marketing this to mature women over 40. Now this is the only real cream concealer that I am sharing with you today. It does not have a doe foot applicator and I do want to show you the consistency because it really does have quite a thick consistency. As far as the shades, although Fiera recently did add three shades, they still only have eight shades. This is the shade Neutral Beige, which does work pretty well for me. Neutral Beige. As far as the claims, Fiera states they include light refracting pigments to blur lines and wrinkles. They say it will work as an under eye concealer, spot concealer, even as an all over foundation. The hydrating formula includes skin loving ingredients with emollients, antioxidants, and peptides. They say it has weightless, blendable coverage that looks and feels like a second skin that provides dewy, radiant plumping to give us that youthful glow. This is definitely the most emollient, the most moisturizing, and the glowiest of all the concealers I'm sharing with you today. Almost like a skincare, skin tint, concealer combo hybrid. As far as the coverage, I find the coverage to be light to light medium at best. If I try to build this up to a solid medium coverage, I find it to start to look a little bit heavy. But I do enjoy this to brighten up and moisturize my under eyes on no makeup makeup days or light makeup makeup days. This can look a little too glowy at times, but a light set with my hourglass will take the glow down just enough. Anyway, this is a very unique product that has a solid place in my makeup toolkit. These last two I ranked the highest simply because I find myself reaching for these over any of the others that I've talked about, starting with Natasha Denona High Glam Concealer. 
This runs $30 for 7 mLs, making it a fairly pricey $4.29 an mL. This also has the hugest shade selection. This has 50 shades, ranging from very fair to very deep, with every undertone you can think of. Natasha Denona also makes a corrector with six peach and pink corrector shades, but I did not purchase the corrector. Anyway, this does have a doe foot applicator, and I have it in the shade 4N Light Neutral, which is a really good shade for me. Natasha Denona claims that this will be a long-lasting creaseless concealer with a natural medium to full coverage luminous matte finish. I find luminous matte to be a little bit confusing. Anyway, this does contain biomimetic pigments and texture perfecting microspheres for flawless airbrushed results with a weightless natural look and a supremely flexible feel. So this is supposed to be hydrating, lightweight, creaseless, and long lasting. I will say this is the only concealer that I'm sharing today that does have added fragrance. I find the scent to be very lightweight and pleasant. It does dissipate quickly, but it is there. I find this to be very creamy, yet lightweight, super easy to blend. I don't apply quite enough to get a full coverage, but I do get a very nice medium coverage with the small amount that I apply. The finish is a really pretty natural satin skin-like finish, minimal creasing, wears very well without any powder. I have heard some people say it can look a little dry as the day wears on, but I haven't found that to be the case. Although I usually prehydrate my under eyes with an eye cream, so I'm sure that helps. It also works fantastically as a facial concealer around my nose, on my age spots, it's very smoothing with a really pretty natural satin skin-like finish. I really do enjoy this one. The concealer that I have been reaching for the most and the one I'm wearing today is the Tower 28 Swipe All Over Hydrating Serum Concealer. This is a little more affordable than the Natasha Denona. This is $22 for 6.5 mLs, making it $3.39 per mL. This does have a doe foot applicator, and it does come in 20 shades. I have it in the shade seven, medium neutral. Now I am usually more in the light range, so I feel like these might run just a tad deep because I usually don't do medium, and the medium neutral works really well for me. This claims to be a hydrating concealer that glides on like a serum easy to blend for weightless medium coverage with a natural skin-like finish that doesn't cling to dry patches, and I agree with all those claims. The Tower 28 does remind me a little bit of the Kosas in texture, although a much easier shade range because it doesn't run as yellow. However, Tower 28, like Kosas, is clean beauty, so I'm really hoping that the Tower 28 doesn't go off as quickly as the Kosas anyway, did. I really do enjoy the silky creamy texture. This blends super easily and it just looks really natural. It seems to have a little more stretch than the Natasha Denona, also a little bit more hydrating and radiant. I find this one to look really good with minimal creasing throughout the day with or without lightly setting. Like I said, I enjoy both the Natasha Denona and the Tower 28, but I did rank the Tower 28 a little bit higher. It's a little less expensive, it's a little more hydrating, it does not contain fragrance, and it contains some of my favorite skin-loving ingredients such as Centella Asiatica and green tea extract. I will say that none of these concealers has lessened my devotion to my beloved Lancome Tinted Dull Ultra Wear All Over Concealer. As fun as it is to test new concealers for you, I have to almost force myself not to use this in order to give some of these other concealers a chance. You know, we all have different issues and different needs, so please share your thoughts on any of the concealers that I shared today, and please share your favorites and fails so we can all learn from each other. And with that, have yourself a great day, a wonderful week, and I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you.